Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Friday. I have to say, I have been a Dallas Cowboy fan for my whole life. And I don't know that I've ever remembered a time that we have... Um, so many fans that are just pissed off. Cowboy Nation is just mad, and and, and they, they want the you know they, they want the pound of flesh. No, they they want ten pounds of flesh. They're not believing Jerry Jones and his stuff. People are calling. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me. <laughs> I'm calling Jerry out and everything else. But the backlash for D Law basically saying we were tired. It was a long season by the time playoffs came through is really had a bad backlash and um the dan quinn situation where we were literally held hostage and waiting and waiting and waiting while other teams made their moves and then you start looking at all the candidates and stuff that have gone through and gotten hired and actually at the moment you know we heard last night that you know it was going to be mike zimmer and stuff and a little birdie told me this morning they worked through the night last night and, you know, trying to get it done, but, you know, didn't quite get it done yet. And here it is. We've gone through the whole day and it hasn't been finalized. So let's hope that Cap Boy, Cap Boy hasn't messed it up. Um, this is getting interesting to say the least, but this maybe is some good news. I was watching and listening, you know, shout out to 105 The Fan, uh, G Bag Nation and all because they're getting some great interviews we've seen um we, we've seen emmett smith go off on mike mccarthy and say if i was gm he wouldn't be here uh my, we've seen michael irvin go off and things we have everybody that's mad but we also have you have to actually look at it and say one of the bright spots we actually had and probably a season saver was having stefan gilmore and Brandon Cooks, that those two guys, that was one of the few things that you looked at and said, those were good moves because most of the things, with the exception of getting our kicker that we did to improve the team last year, didn't work out too good. I mean, you know, re-signing Terrence Steele, Terrence Steele, we got him locked up, but you looked at that and say, he didn't really have that great a season. You can look at Tony Pollard, and Tony Pollard, he did get a 1,000 yards, but nobody was scared of our running attack uh brandon cooks um was our number well receiver not tight end tight end actually had more yards but number two receiver played pretty well but he was far from his usual thousand yard season um that we're used to actually seeing him and stefan gilmore ended up being the number one cornerback after Diggs went down and you know definitely was thrown into the wolves um and he is one of those free agents that we have. So listening to him on the fan, and he's also commented as well, and I'll pull up the comments, but I want you guys to listen uh, to Stefan Gilmore and Brandon Cooks, uh, at least get a little bit of them, and, and you'll see that he sounds like he wants to come back to the shit show. Thanks yeah. for joining us here on 105 through the fan. It's it's great to see you again. Of course, we had Always. a long conversation yeah, yeah, with yeah, Brandon yeah. last yeah. year on the tennis courts, uh -huh. and uh, it's a, a special opportunity here on a football Friday yeah. going into the Super Bowl yeah, yeah. to talk with here the two go. newest Cowboys, two new Cowboy stars yeah. from last year. How are you guys doing? I'm good, good. Always good to see y'all. Always, uh, always love hanging out with y'all. Right on. Uh, now, you did know. you fly yourself down here? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and that would have been too of a long of a flight, but. Uh, you know, the, the cloud's getting out of Oregon right now. I, I wouldn't mess with it. Yeah. Well, you know, going into the offseason, uh, assuming that you're back, Stefan, one of the conversations about around the Cowboys is do you guys feel like you have enough uh, to, to take that next step? I think um, we have enough, but I think uh, we got to, if I'm, if I'm back, have to make some moves, obviously, to fix the things we wasn't well at last year. Obviously, you always want to get better. And... You know, you got to leave that up to the, you know, the GMs and the coaches yeah. and the people in the front office to, to make those decisions. You're such an attention to detail guy when yeah. I watched you play all your whole career. Yeah. And, like, I'm watching tape and, you know, you're scrambling on the back of the end zone running into people and picks and stuff like yeah. that. Where was the communication? And we saw it a little bit in Green Bay in that game. And, and you're, like, thinking, 
they, they don't bust unless it's a communication or something happens. Yeah. Am I seeing it the right way, or is it is it more than that? I think um, Green Bay had a great scheme for what we what we do, what we normally do, and um, like they established their one pretty well. And you know, once you once you can run the ball, it's just tough to stop an offense. And you know, guys try to get out of position to stop the run, and, and I think they. They just played more physical than we, what, we, what we did that, that game, and, and that's why they won the game. Some of the reactions have been explosive. I think it's like a historic level of frustration from some of the players and the, and the fans and the media. How are you guys doing with it? Is it, is it okay? Is it yeah, I mean, frustrating for you guys? It's no question frustrating, especially when you really sit there and you feel like you have all the pieces. Mm -hmm. and you feel like, all right, this is our year, right? Yeah. Um, you, you know, you get to the first round and you get knocked out first round. Uh, it's going to sting for a while, but on the flip side of that, it's like, okay, is it going to feel you? How are you going to respond to that? And that's that's the mindset we got to have this offseason. Become more disciplined, work harder, and at the end of the day, tune out all that noise, uh, you know, because we ain't really done nothing yet. Brandon, you, you guys, well, both of you are pros, pros in the scouting world. You, hey, those guys are pros. Yeah. You know, and it took, it took, we, I mean, on radio, we're arguing in the first five <coughs> weeks of the season, get him going, yeah. get him going, get him going. Did, was it was there any frustration because you didn't show it no you didn't show it at yeah. all i mean you could have you could have maybe stepped up and said something but you didn't you just yeah. and they finally got it going how was the early part of the season you was know, it frustrating it, it was definitely you? tough because of what i know i provide for this offense right. provide for my team because at the end of the day i just want to win mm -hmm. right um and I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel that way if I feel like I couldn't, I couldn't do it at a high level. But uh, it, it, it was frustrating inside, but also at the same time, I know if you display that frustration, now you start to mess with the dynamic of the team, and it, it's just not worth it. You know, trust mm -hmm. the process, trust coach. Oh, not and trust the process. And then when process. your number is called, you know, uh, make sure you do something with it. So now they know. Like So when this offseason comes, when, when we scheming, you game planning, Make sure, uh, you know, three is involved in that a lot. Yeah. Both of you guys have been in very high-profile mm -hmm. situations, you know, uh, playing, you know, for the championship. What's the, what's the, um, what's the difference in being with the Cowboys? Mm -hmm. You know, like Tank said yesterday on first take, it kind of feels like we're playing for the Super Bowl every week with the amount of pressure. I, I, I don't think that. I just think, you know, me coming from the places that I came from and even just winning the Super Bowl, just tuning out all the noise. Mm -hmm. And just tuning out all the noise. At the end of the day, you got to go in between the white lines, no matter what nobody say, and and win the football game and play at a high level. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they're gonna talk about you, but that's a. I feel like that's a good thing, um, because I've Future been places work. where, you know, they don't talk about <laughs> yeah. you. So, so um, it's it's a good thing yeah. for for me, because you know, um, like I said, I, I take it full advantage mm -hmm. of that opportunity. All right, so we're going to leave that right there. There's a whole interview with them uh, on G-Bag Nation, about another eight minutes or, or so of it. But Stefan went on um, Dallas-Fort Worth ticket um, and basically saying he wants to return. I want to come back. We can't talk until March, but that's the goal because I think we do have the pieces to get where we want to go. Um, and I want to be part of that. So there you have it. Stefan Gilmore wants to come back and um, hopefully the Cowboys get something done. He is having surgery, so he'll be out for, I think, uh, three to five months, but should be ready to go before training camp starts. So we'll be talking about this as well as what's going on with Mike Zimmer. Uh, nine o'clock Eastern. I know everybody's upset still, and you know everybody is everybody's at everybody's throats, and uh, it's it's not good right now. All right, good people. We'll see you at nine. Peace.